my father, he would hire a movie projector. And I remember being fascinated by the way that it works and the way the film ran through the projector gate. And that actually kind of lived with me for some reason. And maybe it was why I got interested in cameras in the first place. But as far as I remember, my first camera was a box brownie. And these rectangular things were very simple. But I can remember having one and taking some photos with it, maybe when I was about nine years old. My name's Dave Francis. I went to the University of Leicester in 59, graduated in 62 in sociology, and I was also one of the photographers on Ripple. My first day at university, now that was uh, really something. I went from Hove in Sussex to Leicester and we had a little bit of a wild time. I'd never really traveled before and it was a big experience for myself and my friends to actually go to university. The day dawned when I had to go in and there was this enormous queue of students lining up to complete the formalities, to sign the forms and to get acquainted. And then was sent off to the Hall of Residence where I got to know a few of the people there. We ended the day by going to the pub and having a couple of beers. I found the social life a revelation. There was a Saturday evening dance, for example, which I often went to. The new band, the Rolling Stones, actually came and played. That was one that I missed. I was downstairs having a drink in the bar. This, I never actually have succeeded in getting over, the fact that I missed the Rolling Stones. It's important for people to realize that sociology was a very new topic. Yes, there were relatively few universities that studied it. There were no A-levels in sociology. So it was something which, for me, was an adventure into the unknown. The head of the department of sociology when I was at Leicester was Professor Neustadt. Yes, this, this gentleman is a, was a right character, <laughs> as, as you say. And he was also an important character in my life. And he was the boss of the sociology department when I was there. And you can see in the picture he looks uh, genial. But actually he had a lot of strength about him. Mm. And to tell you the truth, we were a bit scared of him. Now, he was really a character that could be in a work of fiction. And really was absolutely 100% passionate about sociology. But the main thing that I remember about him was his power in getting all the students and the staff together in order to work out what sociology needed to do to really make a difference. My time as a Ripple photographer was just uh, in incredible because what it did was it gave me opportunities to have assignments. So the kinds of things that we did included RAG. RAG was a big event. For months before, people would start preparing. Floats would be prepared. And the RAG week was a whole week of fun and games with people out and about doing all sorts of weird and wonderful things. Rag Week was a huge event in the life of the students at the University of Leicester. When I was at university, there was one predominant theme which affected us. I remember waking up thinking about it 
almost as if I was inhabited by a nightmare, a bad dream. And this was the threat of nuclear war. And that threat actually led to a huge upsurge of concern which found its expression in the campaign for nuclear disarmament. And I, working at that time as a Ripple photographer, went to several demonstrations, huge demonstrations, particularly one at an airfield called Bryce Norton. It impacted on us so much that we developed a kind of collective insecurity. And that insecurity found its way into expression through different kinds of protests and protest movements. And that was really the kind of photographer that I wanted to be. I felt, in a way, in the spirit of the British documentary tradition. So it wasn't just as it were, an enjoyable task being the Ripple photographer. It was a discipline. And that discipline actually was just as important to me as some of the conceptual input and the theories of sociology and politics and so on that I learned in the academic world. I went to university. All the other boys that I knew of actually went into useful things like they became bank employees or they joined their parents' businesses or one of them went into the arts fields. But I decided that I wanted to actually try to be more of a scholar. And this, as it were, reprogrammed me in a way that was totally unexpected. It led me to have ambitions which weren't just local, they were broader, they were bigger. I wanted to somehow make a substantive difference. Now, whether or not I succeeded in that, whether or not I was a better person through it, I can't tell but I can absolutely sit here after all these years and say to you that experience transformed me absolutely. That university time, the blend and mixture of formal education but also all of those different activities, the opportunities that were there to be grasped. That was really the alchemy of transformation of who I was. My life would have been very different had I not been to the University of Leicester. 